My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. You know, we talk a lot on the show. As a matter of fact, we dedicate this show to the problems caused by fungus and their byproducts. These are called mycotoxins. And we've talked about cancer. We've done whole shows, right, on gallbladder disease and kidney disease and pancreatic disease and heart disease and skin disease. And we've run from big toes to hair loss caused by fungus. But there's one disease we haven't touched on, and I want to today, and I want to set this up a little bit differently. So in the next, oh, 20 minutes from now or so, you'll know what that disease is, but I want to lead into it. Many of you know I was a hospital corpsman, graduated from corpsman school, or as our president says, corpsman school, uh, back in 19, oh boy, I'm going to date myself, 68 or 69. And then they trained us for a year. I was in the operating room, a technician, and in anesthesia, a technician. <clears throat> and then a bunch of us got our orders, and off we went to Vietnam. One of the most horrible things we could hear in Vietnam uh, was corpsman up. What that meant was somebody was shot, you know, and, and they needed a corpsman to go to the aid of one of the Marines. I was with the 7th Marine Division. Incredible men and women uh, that were in the field, you know, with us in the operating rooms and so forth. Uh, but corpsman up, wow, that was tough to hear because your heart started beating. We wouldn't change clothes for a long period of time. We wore green underwear, green socks, green, you know, camouflaged outfits and so forth, hats, helmets, uh, flak jackets, the whole number. <clears throat> we ate sea rats. Sea rations came in a brown can, you know, a little paper box, about yay big, and they always had uh, four cigarettes, chiclet gum, toilet paper, and then pears or meatballs or something like that, and that's what we ate. And uh, we would be wet during monsoon weather. We would be wet from morning till night. Sometimes we got a three-hour reprieve from all the rain, but it, it wasn't like you and I know rain. It was like somebody had hoses on. It hurt when it hit you. You wore a helmet. You guys know if you were in the war. It, it hurt that rain came down so hard. And all day you were walking, so you're sweating and so forth. Hygiene was something you say to people. Hi, Gene, how are you? It wasn't something you lived in Vietnam. Acne was a horrible problem. I'm telling you, you tend to think of acne on the face. Our bodies were covered with acne. Our bodies were also covered with this. Jungle rot is what this is. Um, this was so common. As a corpsman, these guys came to me, and there were dozens of them who had come to me whose legs, this is someone's leg, uh, shin, uh, and they're just eaten away by bacteria, fungus, etc. And then look at this. This, this was actually could have been not the toenails, but the foot. Your foot would constantly, that's a heel, peel and peel and peel. And folks, there's a reason for that. Without any hygiene, this ensues. This is called jungle rot. You would have your thick socks, green socks, and these boots, steel-toed boots that you wore. And man, they became, the, you were more concerned having those on than any of the rest of your clothing because landmines, you know, you didn't want to go around without shoes on. But what would happen is, unless you took your boots off and your socks off and let them kind of sun dry, and in the monsoon you couldn't, there wasn't sun, it just rained, um, they'd never be dry. So for weeks and weeks and weeks, you'd walk around, I remember, you know, that's the way you'd walk, through all the elephant grass and so forth. But boy, when we finally got back to Da Nang, when we got a week off, the helicopters would pick us up, uh, everything started to be okay. Look at this. Today we say Agent Orange were annihilated all of us. But look at the symptoms and look at the exposure to fungus symptoms. They're identical. Liver dysfunction, cancer, personality disorders, vision, hearing, headaches, memory loss, yellowing of the eyes, shortness of breath, and vomiting. So you have to know that what today we Vietnam veterans blame on a herbicide uh, called Agent Orange might have in fact been totally due 
to the fact that we were covered in fungus because there was no hygiene. You know, we didn't have a toilet. Uh, you didn't have a bowl of water to wash your face or any soap. You just did whatever was done out there for months at a time until you got back to the, the rear where you had guys with machine guns around you to take care of you for a few days while you relaxed, R&R. &R. Uh, so now let's go from the Vietnam War, when we get back from this break, to wars that are still taking place today, Afghanistan, Iraq. What are those young men and women doing today and why are they sick? Diabetes is epidemic with your immune cells mistakenly attack your own body. In diabetes, your pancreas is the victim with dangerous improper production of insulin and excessive unwanted blood sugar the result. You need blood sugar normalization and improved insulin intake in your cells. Eat a no sugar diet and regularly monitor sugar levels. Take ammunition glucan, requiring no prescriptions to nutritionally help promote proper insulin production in the pancreas. The ammunition glucan also enhances immune cytokines that are out of kilter and not properly performing. For a diabetic retinopathy that attacks your eyes, don't be without the NSC Eye Care formula loaded with nutritional ingredients beneficial to vision. If you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, daily take NSC 100 Extra Strength Glucan and NSC Ammunition Eye Care Formula. Which of my books fits you? Are you or a loved one suffering from mental dysfunctions, hormone problems, autoimmune diseases, or ear, nose, and throat problems? Good news is you'll get educated on all those health problems and you'll have the phase one, phase two diets, and whether or not you might consider prescriptive drugs and what they are, or natural approaches, all in the Fungus Link, volume two. And so before we transition into the next set of wars, Afghanistan, Iraq, and so forth, uh, let's go backwards even beyond Vietnam. It was really during the Korean conflict that many of the things you see today began to happen out in the field, right? Today they happen in the highways. I was on the way to the hospital where I worked oh, 20 years ago, and they had the whole freeway blocked off, five lanes, the 635 freeway here in Dallas, and they set a helicopter down, a bad wreck a mile up the road, they set a helicopter down, and they literally medevaced, medical evacuation, somebody that was hurt, very hurt, very injured in this car. And I thought, wow, 30, 40 years ago, that was me. A helicopter would land, we'd call it in and say, this guy's missing an arm, he's hurting, and boy, it was wild out there. So much of what you see today, emergency rooms and so forth, set up uh, kind of in the Korean War, then the Vietnam War. But what about World War II? This is fascinating to me. This is a book, Manual of Clinical Mycology, that was written by five Duke doctors back during World War II, 1945. Listen to what they said. As a matter of fact, fungal infections are so prevalent today, 1945, that they should not be in the field of interest of a few doctors, but serve to educate and be the attention of all physicians. Fungal infections are of such common occurrence, we have found it necessary to consider fungal diseases in the differential diagnosis of practically every obscure infection. What does that mean? It means every time in 1945, every time you went to a doctor, Duke University anyway, these doctors would examine you with fungus in mind. Folks, since 1945, antibiotics have come out. Antibiotics are fungal metabolites, fungal poisons. Thank God they knock out bacteria, but they can also knock out bigger organisms in bigger doses, and you and I are bigger organisms. We have to be careful with antibiotics. A lot's happened, birth control pills, which encourage yeast to grow through the body and so forth. A lot of medications have come out that suppress the immune system. And by the way, anytime the immune system is down, fungus can rapidly grow. So what we want to teach you here today is really what was going on in the military and how relevant that is to today's researchers. It's unfortunate that in medical school, doctors don't learn about fungus. This is 70 years ago. And they're saying all doctors should concentrate on fungus. It's not out there, folks. And as we go into the next segment, and we learn about fungus down in the soil, or worse, 
in the sand, we've got to keep our eyes open. Because an image that just is constantly in my mind when we took over, went into Afghanistan with all the troops, well, we'll talk about that image when we get back from this break, but it's important that you understand during the wars, tremendous technology evolves that saves lives today. That's what Know the Cause is all about, bringing you the diet changes, bringing you the emergency medicine and so forth that really helps you today. Don't go away. I was in the Marine Corps in Vietnam uh, from the start of the Tet Offensive in 1968 through February of 1969. In the Southeast Asia, I mean, it was a fungus and mold empire. Everything we did was covered with it. Uh, our clothes were covered with it. We were covered with it. You couldn't wash it off. When I came back, I was covered with a type of skin fungus. I went to the uh, Navy Medical Corps and asked for help, and they weren't able to do anything. The VA said, we don't know what you got. And I, and I went to many doctors who told me that. I, 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 I don't know how to cure this, is what I heard repeatedly. My son started uh, talking about Doug and his program and fungal infections. I cut back on drinking, which hurt. I cut back on sugar, and I take uh, olive leaf extract at least uh, one day, five pills in the morning, five in the afternoon. Uh, I take cinnamon. Uh, I'm going to start taking apple cider vinegar, and uh, one of these days I'm going to find somebody who prescribes some diflucan or an Istatin. But the important thing is to Get the sugar out of your diet, get it out of your life. And listen to Doug, uh, what he's telling you is, is true. It wasn't until I got on phase one and really started concentrating on getting rid of sugar that I realized after a while it was gone. I haven't had it for almost 10 years now. And yeah, it was phenomenal. You know, this was one of the most interesting interviews I've ever done. And I've never asked you on this show to donate money to anything. I think when you watch this, you'll be compelled to watch this. <laughs> there is Sergeant Travis Mills. I told you about him in the opening of today's show, and folks, I, we only have three minutes to talk, so I want to let him get his story out. Sergeant Mills uh, was uh, injured during the Afghan, uh, Afghanistan war. Bad day for you. It was April 10th, 2012, a day that will live forever in your mind. Um, your first concern was the other guys with you. And that to me is amazing. But did you know how badly you were injured when, when the IED went off? I, I, when I hit the ground, I looked over. As yeah. soon as I hit the ground, I looked over as I flipped through the air. Uh, this arm was gone, this leg was gone. You know, kind of spewing blood. This was hanging on by a couple pieces of meat, but basically gone. My hand was kind of blown out in the wrist and drooping. So I knew how bad it was, um, but you know, your first instinct as an NCO is take care of the soldiers. Take care of the soldiers. Uh, they eat first. You know, they get more rest than you. They, even though like they work for you, you really work for them. So shrapnel. There was a lot of shrapnel. A lot of shrapnel. Um, and and I had two guys I knew had, were near me enough to get hit. So I was just yelling at the medic, get away from me, leave me alone, um, take care of my guys. And they were the medic was telling me in turn, be quiet, let me do my job. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but right, exactly. Uh, a lot going you know, on. You know, be quiet. Out. Let me do my job, and they're fine. And then about 40, 40 seconds into it, they yelled back. Two guys that got hurt yelled back. They're okay. So I just good. Oh, okay, cool. You guys are all medevac. Um, four days later, you wake up in Germany on your twenty-fifth birthday. Yeah. A friend is cleaning your rings, right? That he's ready to hand to you, a uh, wedding ring, and uh, they say happy birthday. You don't, yeah. you know, you lost your arms and your legs. I think they saved the happy birthday for after I, I woke <laughs> up. Because uh, I asked, first of all, my soldiers, how are they doing? And he told me, he gave me the update, and then I said, am I paralyzed? And he said, no. And I said, hey, you know, guys, you're fine. I'm fine. You, I can take it. Just let me know. And he had to tell me, like, no, you do, you're not paralyzed. Mm -hmm. but you don't have your arms and legs. And then I just kind of drifted back off to a little more rest. Travis, recently I've sat down with a couple of people in my office who have cried because their cancer is back or their stomach hurts so bad or their head hurts so bad. And I really wanted this audience, I love this audience, uh, and I wanted this audience to meet you because you seem to have an attitude that is like none other I've ever seen. Uh, I appreciate that. Thanks, you know, for the compliment, as I'm going to take it as one. Um, really, I just, my, my wife and child are still here. Uh, I'm still here. I'm very fortunate. My problems are no more, you know, greater than anybody else's, I don't think. And that's, that's horrible when people have the, the cancer that comes back or tumors mm -hmm. or, you know, things doctors don't even know about uh, why they're sick. And that's, 
that's too bad, but every day here you got to keep moving forward and keep a positive attitude. You know, everybody's like, oh, it could be worse, but for me it's more like it, it's going to get better. There's a Traver uh, Travis Mills Foundation. It's travismills.org. And Leanne uh, Billings, who wrote this book, remember the mold book? We had she and Kurt, her husband, on uh, quite a few years ago. Wonderful book. She has written these books that when you donate, I know it's nine, ten dollars mm -hmm. to the Travis Mills mm -hmm. uh, Foundation, uh, he will get some of those proceeds. And guess what this man is doing? He's not going out and buying a new car. He's giving mm -hmm. that money to other soldiers who have lost their lives or limbs and have families, daughters, sons that mm -hmm. need the help. Thank you for all you do. It's really, you're, you're one of my heroes. Thank oh, you, Travis. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You helped me get the uh, story out. You bet. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, author of The 24-Hour Pharmacist, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You see, most probiotic products contain billions of freeze-dried bacteria, but that can aggravate bloating and gas. Dr. O'Hara's provides only live, beneficial bacteria, plus their prebiotic nutrition. It supports noticeable digestive comfort. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's consistent results. It takes guts to feel great. Which of my books fits you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can you eat your way to wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health, loaded with recipes, whether you want to follow the phase one diet or the phase two diet. Please your families with good tasting foods, all put together in these two great recipe books. Okay, no history lesson here, more of a physiology lesson that I want to ensue now. So, Twin Towers come down, horrible, horrible, horrific. Uh, and a, a W, George W, says, okay, we're going to go get these people. Off we go to Afghanistan and then Iraq. And off thousands and thousands of young guys, now the age of these guys holding cameras and doing our editing work and, and camera work and so forth here. Um, and their peers, a lot of their friends uh, ended up over there. But you recall what you saw on television when war was declared. You see the troops landing and then, this isn't the greatest picture I could have gotten, but did you see this? You know what's right below, you know, five, from ground to two or three hundred feet? Dust. And I remember the troops landing in these big uh, amphibious things and, and I remember the helicopters, the CH-46s dropping the guys off and so forth. I'm watching on TV. And I'm thinking, wow, every one of those young 20-somethings, men and women, are inhaling dust, okay? So go back with me to the 1930s and 1940s. This is an old medical textbook. And this old medical textbook talked about 10 of 14 people that developed valley fever following the inhalation of desert dust raised in an attempt to dig a rattlesnake out of its hole. 10 of 14 people got into dust, and they got really, really sick. And so these scientists in the 1940s, this book, by the way, comes out of Johns Hopkins Medical School. It was Dr. David Weekly's medical textbook, 1957. But it talks about in the 30s and 40s, they went out and cultured. They took cultures like, uh, like you know, these ear cleaners, and they go out in the dust, and they stir up some of it, and then they go back to a laboratory and grow it. <clears throat> And it's something called coccidio imitus, right? The spore, the fungus is called coccidio imitus. The disease that ensued in those 10 of 14 people was called coccidio idomycosis. And I don't think this is rare today. And in this same book, they talked about how that fungus primarily, they inhaled it. It went to their lungs. But then it metastasizes or disseminates like that. The lungs, as you know, are a very, very bloody area of your body, lots of veins, arteries, capillaries, and so forth. So in goes the coccidio imitus, the mold, and there it goes. You can walk away from that rattlesnake hole all you want, but it's sticky and it's growing in your lungs. And pretty soon, <coughs> you can't breathe. And it looks like asthma, it looks like today, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and it looks like emphysema, but you never smoked a day in your life. Right? But did you live in a moldy home with some of this mold in it? Now, I'm watching these young 20 and 30 somethings breathing all of this. And then they come home and the list 
was endless. Many of them, I'd say the majority of them, have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. By the way, that's a head thing. I went to Vietnam when I was 20 years old. I came home when I was 21. I was not the same guy. I'm telling you, I didn't feel well. My skin was bleeding. I had these things like you saw sores all over my body, et cetera. Those have all healed. My brain is healed. I met a great gal, had two sons. They have families now. Happiest man in the world. But not everybody gets through that. Some guys end up with post-traumatic stress disorder. Some ended up with gastroenteritis and other gut problems, right? Some ended up, many of them ended up with respiratory disorders. And then so many of them ended up with coccidioideomycoses or breathing in that fungus. That's the disease I want to teach you about on today's show. <clears throat> what happens when fungus breaks the blood-brain barrier? You know, we know medications do. We know how they do it. But what happens when a spore, a 20-year-old kid with a 100-pound knapsack on his back, or 10,000 kids, what happens when helicopters are landing and all the ground troops are you know, being deployed to go over there, and they sit down in brand new soil that their immune system has never experienced, and they're breathing in desert sand. A 1957 book says, sand has fungus, just like soil. So what ensues? We can give them, and we are, all the money in the world. Give you $1,500 a month for your post-traumatic stress. I hope that helps you. I hope you can use this you know, to help with your education, help with your housing, food, clothing, etc. But how could we help these people even more? The answer is by knowing the etiology. I named this show Know the Cause, knowing the cause of their illness. Don't go away, I'll be right back. If you have knee pain, back pain, muscle pain, or any kind of pain, Flexin is here to help. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's what this Flexin user has to say. Well, I recommend Flexin because it has worked so well for my wife and I, and we are able to continue our work uh, pain-free as a result of taking this product faithfully. You've seen Flexin on Know the Cause with Doug Kaufman. Now's your chance to take advantage of this great offer. It's buy one, get one free, but you have to call right now. Call 1-800-N-PAIN. Time Magazine says 22 veterans commit suicide each day. First and foremost, combat exposes soldiers to traumatic life and death situations and depression and PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, may result. Other soldiers return with brain injuries. All of these ailments have been linked to an increased risk of suicide. So what we have here, folks, is another disease that we don't talk about on Know the Cause. We talk a lot about heart disease, blood disease, cancer, etc. We don't talk about this one. This one is called depression and it's bad, right? Post-traumatic stress. I am depressed all the time. I'm blue. I'm not the same guy or gal I went over to Iraq as. I came home totally different. I read with fascination. It's on the internet. It's USA Today. Um, what was the date? 5-11-2011. 5-11-2011. One man's hypothesis. See, this guy was in the war and he came back different. And he interviewed an anesthesiologist, a female anesthesiologist that worked over there helping the wounded. She came home a totally different person. And what he did was went back and with those Q-tips, you know, <clears throat> he dug up a little sand and he found bacteria and other organisms, virus and shh, fungus. It's always fungus that gets, shh, a little bit of fungus can't hurt anybody. It's the bacteria. Why aren't we putting seriously depressed pre-suicidal men and women on antibiotics. Antibiotics kill bacteria. It doesn't work. As a matter of fact, it may hasten their demise. Folks, all you need with a bowl full of yeast, right, is to sprinkle a little antibiotic on it, and poof, there it goes. Man, fuel for the yeast. This depression is so bad. We're talking about 22 soldiers a day coming home from war. That doesn't even touch on all the other school students, moms, dads, etc., friends of ours who commit suicide. This is a huge problem, and yet, isn't it ironic? We are taking more antidepressant medicine than we ever have in the history of this great country. Doctors really believe a new antidepressant is going to fix this. Gee, if all these kids coming home from overseas could just take 
you name it. I can't even pronounce the name of these things, but they're rapidly producing them because we care about our soldiers. I care about our soldiers too because I was one. If you do me a favor, guys and gals who are in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and you're at home watching this right now, or your loved one is, your mom or dad, and you're really feeling down, the best thing I can tell you is change. Just a few letters, C-H-A-N-G-E, six letters. You are craving carbohydrates. Man, you can't eat enough cereal, enough bread, enough pasta. You're craving potatoes. You're craving alcohol, trying to bury your wounds. You don't understand. Science tells us, well, you're drinking because you're under so much stress. No, you're not. You're drinking because yeast is now growing in your brain and through your bloodstream, and it's dictating your behavior. That's why you're drinking. It's physiological, it's not psychological. And then they tell us you have this horrible psychological problem that only their drugs and doctors can take care of. Guys, I handle it myself, so many of you have. If you'll change your diet and stay away from sugars and alcohol and fast foods and drink juices, you know, good stuff, not packaged stuff that's been there a long time. Go to a juice bar, have them make it fresh. Start taking herbs, all of which are antifungal. Watch how you feel 10 days from now. You will realize that what happened to you was those sandstorms got into your lungs, have now grown into your brain, and you cry each and every day. Does it have to be like that? Medical science says, nope, here's a pill. That doesn't work, go to another doctor. He'll give you another pill. I'm saying you have more control than you know in the palm of your hand. Hi, I'm Carlos Escalante. For generations, the southern regions of Italy have been known for low incidences of cardiovascular health. And here's the reason why. Bergamante, an extract with published human clinical studies for the support of healthy cholesterol and blood sugar levels. Also a powerful antioxidant. Call today to find out how you can get a free bottle of Bergamante by Herbal Ultra. Which of my books fit you? The first time I wrote this book, I called it, What Makes Bread Rise? Many people didn't get it. The same yeast that makes bread rise can make us rise. So is there a fungal link to weight problems in America? Read the fungus link to weight loss. The diets are there, the prescriptive, the natural antifungals. I think you'll enjoy it, and I think it'll cost you a lot of pounds. Of course, you guys already know this, but you can get my show, Let's Make It Go, every day right here on your iPad, on your cell phone. Uh, and do me a favor, if you have a loved one who is back from the war and they're experiencing suicidal tendencies or very, very depressed, have them go to my Facebook, knowthecause.com, say, howdy, Doug, I'm back from Afghanistan and I'm really, really down. I talk to people on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you absorbed a lot of this. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.